If you're using vector search to retrieve information from your knowledge base, there could be a high possibilities that we get inaccurate results from the vector search. For example, if users are looking for black shoes, and when we send this query to the vector database, the vector database might send a similar representation or similar results based on the user query. So for example, we might look for red shoes or different colors of shoes, and at the end, we might get inaccurate results and might lead to dissatisfaction from the customer. The reason why it does that is because semantic search or vector search, they're usually good at looking for similar information from the knowledge base, but it's not good to find exact products or exact informations that we have in our knowledge base. And that's why in this video, we're gonna build a hybrid rag that solved this problem using NAN and Superbase. Now to understand how the hybrid search work, we need to understand how the vector search work. So basically, like I mentioned, vector search, when user sends a query, is going to use a dense vectors and basically, when this query sends to the vector database, we're going to retrieve similar results that were relevant to what the user are looking for. But vector search cannot pinpoint exact terms, so that's the downfall for the vector search. And to give you an example of what I'm talking about, for example, let's say if users are looking for the Italian recipes for tomato sauce, and our knowledge base has different recipes, right? So ideally, we want to use semantic search because it's able to search by meanings and it's able to give recommendations or similar results based on what the users are asking for. However, though, if we were to use semantic search or vector search to pinpoint specific items, for example, we're looking for blue shirts size large. Then when we're using semantic search, we're basically searching by meanings. So for example, we might search things like black shirts, white shirts, size large pants, and etc. It's looking for similar information that's related to what the users are looking for. And that's why we need to use the full text search to find exact products searching by keywords. But the problem with the full text search is that if we were to search just by the keywords, and if we were to take a look at the previous example, if we were to use the full text search, we will be searching by keywords like Italian, recipes, tomato sauce. We're gonna break the query word by word and search that inside of our knowledge base, which will give us highly inaccurate results because we're not searching by meanings here. There could be a situation where the knowledge base contains information about Italian buildings or histories or people or historical fig figures about Italian, right? So there could be a lot of things about Italian in the knowledge base. So if we were to just search for keywords, we get so many results that are not relevant to what the user are query for. And that's why we need something called hybrid search where we can be able to combine the vector search right, which is the uh, semantic search. And then we also have the keyword search for the full text search. And we want to combine the searches, which gets the exact results and also the similar results and be able to aggregate those results and provide that based on the user query. And as results, we can get something like this. Let's say we're looking for the Italian recipe for tomato sauce. Then ideally, we want to get similar results or recommendations based on what we're looking for, right? Then if we are looking for, for example, a particular recipe where we're looking for uh, how many grams of sugar for this recipe, we're looking for specific or exact terms, then we can be able to get that. For example, we can get exact five grams of sugar for this recipe, for example, right? We can get something that's specific based on the knowledge base that we have. So that's exactly what we're gonna build in this video. So by the end of this video, you will have a fully functional AI agents hybrid rag that lives inside of your NAN workflow. So if you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video and consider subscribing for more content like this. Now, with that being said, if you're interested, let's get started. All right, so to get started, first we can navigate to Superbase, and here you can see I have already created accounts. And what we do here is we're gonna create a new project, but since I already have a project, we're just gonna use this project instead. Awesome, so now once we're in the project, we're going to click on database and we're gonna select extensions. So once we select the extension, we're gonna search for vector and we wanna turn on for the vector database extension for Postgres. So we're gonna enable this. So now you can see that the vector extension is enabled. So then we're gonna click on the SQL editor and create a new SQL query to be able to create a document table so that we can create our document table for a hybrid search. Now to create our document table for a hybrid search, which contains the keyword search and also the semantic search, this is gonna be the query that we're gonna use. But basically how this query works is that we have our command to create our table, right? And this is the name of the table, which is called documents, but feel free to name it whatever you want for this table name, but we're just gonna name it for documents for simplicity. And then here inside of this table, we have four columns. The first column we have is the ID, which is an integer ID, which is a primary key for the table, right? And then we also have our content. And then the content here is basically going to be the text chunk from from the knowledge base that we're going to inject. And then here we also have the full text search. In this case, it's gonna be a TS vector, which is gonna be used for the keyword search. And then we also have embedding vectors, which is gonna be our vector embeddings for the semantic search, okay? 
So once you copy this query, you're gonna create a new query here and be able to paste this query for create a new table for documents here. Now, before we run this query though, we wanna make sure that we check with the dimensions for the embedding vectors. Now, because we're using the text embedding three small for the vector database embedding, you can see that the dimension here is 1536. So we're gonna use this. So here, we're just going to put the dimension here for the vector to be 1536, okay? And now we can be able to run our query. All right, so now you can see that the query runs successfully. So we can then be able to view the results in our database. And here, if we were to click on tables, you can see that we have a table called documents. If we were to click on view in the table editor, and here you can see that we have the four columns that we created for this table, right? So we have our ID, the content, full text search, and the embeddings, okay? So then what we can do now is we can be able to add some data, but before we do so, we wanna make sure that we can create some indexes so that it can be able to improve the query performance for this table. Now, based on the documentation, you can see that if we were to scroll down after we create our table for the four columns, now we can also be able to create our indexes for the full text search as well as the semantic vector search so that the query time will be much faster. So in that case, you can see that I have come back to the query. You can see this is, the, this is going to be the query that we're going to run to create those indexes. And I have successfully run those. So if I were to click on the database and click on indexes, and you can see that those are the two main indexes that we have created for the document table. Awesome. So now to really enable the hyper search, we also need to create a function to enable the hyper search for this document table. Now to do so, if we were to follow the documentation, if we were to scroll down, you can see that we have a hyper search function. And this is going to create a function for the hyper search. It's going to create that functionality to combine the full text search along with the semantic search into the search results. So we're just gonna copy this. And here I'm just gonna create a new query and be able to paste it here. And before we run this, make sure we're gonna put the 1536, which is the embedding vectors dimensions that we specified. And we're just gonna run this. Awesome, so now you can see that it has run successfully and we can be able to verify this if we were to click on database and click on functions, you can see that we have a hyper search function created. So now you can see that we have our function created and we pretty much have our table created, also the indexes. Now what we wanna do is we wanna focus on how we can be able to add our triggers. And to do so, we're just going to click on the nav bar and navigate to the edge functions. And here we can be able to deploy an edge function. So here we're just going to open the editor. And here you can see we have our edge function, which is an index.ts TypeScript file, which we can be able to write our edge function. So whenever we wanna do a hyper search in the in a, in a workflow, we can be able to directly call this edge function to retrieve the information we need. Now to do so, if we were to follow the documentation for running the hyper search, we can see that to run the hyper search, we can do this in the SQL editor like this, where we run a SQL query and include the hyper search function. Now, the other way we can do this is to create an edge function, just like what we did to create an edge function. And here, basically, you can see this is the code for running the edge function to basically trigger the hyper search function, right? So here you can see we pass the user query from the request, we create a session, for the super base so that we can be able to access and be able to retrieve information. And here you can see it calls the hyper search function for the Postgres. And here we're going to set the match count to be 10. So here we can change the preference for the match count to be less or more. And then what we do here is basically pass the query so that we can be able to trigger the hyper search function. And once we get the data from the hyper search, then we're going to return this as the response for this edge function. Okay. All right, so now what we need to do is just copy this code and come back to Superbase and replace this sample code with the code that we copied. And right inside of our code, you can see we have our imports, our environment variables, and if you were to scroll down, uh, you can see this is gonna be our main function for the edge function, right? So if we were to scroll down, we're gonna change the model here to be th uh, text embedding three small, and then that dimension here is gonna be 1536. All right, so if we were to scroll down, everything looks good then we're just going to worry about the environment variables. But we're gonna first deploy the function first and then get back to the environment variables because we're going to set those in the secrets for this edge function. So I'm just gonna rename this uh, edge function to be hyper search trigger and we're just gonna deploy this function here. Awesome, so once the function is deployed, this is gonna be the endpoint that we can call. All right, so now we need to worry about is how we can be able to set those environment variables that we have inside of our code, right? So we have the superbase, the service role, and the open AI API key. So to do so, we're gonna click on the secrets on the left-hand side. And here you can see this is where we can be able to add our secrets. So if we were to scroll down, you can see that by default, we already have the superbase URL and the service role. So all we need to do is just add the open AI API key onto here so that we can be able to use that for the text embedding. So to do so, let's take 
take a look at how we can be able to get our API key from OpenAI. All right, so to get the OpenAI API key, you just navigate to the platform.openai.com slash API keys. And here you can see this is where we can be able to create a new secret key. So we're just gonna create a new secret key here. And we're just gonna name this to be hyper search. And then here, I'm just gonna create a new key here. All right, so once I create the key, I'm just going to paste the key here. And in terms of the key name, we're just gonna click on the function and then make sure to click on the code. And this is gonna be the key name, okay? So copy this key name and here's the key. I'm just gonna save this. Awesome, so once we have everything set up, now what we need to do is be able to call this inner side of our NAN workflow, right? So here we're just gonna uh, click on the detail section for the hyper function and we're gonna scroll down. This is gonna be the curl request we're gonna copy and set or use inside of our NAN workflow. All right, so back to NAN workflow, we're just gonna create a workflow. We're just gonna call it hyper rag AI chatbots. And here we're just going to trigger this with a chat interface. So it's gonna be a chat trigger. And then here we're just going to connect it with HTTP request. And then here we're just gonna click on import with curl. We're gonna paste the curl command here and we're gonna click on import. All right, so now you can see that it has imported successfully. You can see that we have the authentications, the bear tokens, and then here we also have the JSON body. Uh, this, this is the JSON body parameter. We're gonna change that later. So here we're just gonna we're just gonna rename this to be Superbase Fiber Function. And then here I'm just gonna go ahead and execute the previous node. So here I'm just going to say hi, and it's gonna trigger this node. And basically this is the chat input. So we can be able to put a chat input inside of our request body. And because inside of our code, you can see that we specifically want to look for the user query, right? So the user query is gonna be a variable name called query. So we wanna make sure that to set that inside of our request body. So back to the NAN, inside of the request parameter, we're just gonna change this to be query. And in terms of the value, it's gonna be the chat input. So we're gonna put the chat input for the query's value. All right, so now if we were to execute the step, you can see that we don't have any outputs on the right. You can see the end node is executed successfully. We don't have any output data return, okay? That's because we don't have any data inside of our database or inside of our data table. So what we need to do now is be able to insert some data into the table so that we can have some data that we can work with. All right, so to do so, basically you can see I have deactivated this workflow currently and I'm gonna create a new workflow to insert data onto the data table. First, we're gonna trigger this manually and we're gonna connect this with a Superbase vector store we're gonna add documents to the vector store. Now, first thing first, we need to set up the credentials. If you haven't done so, please do so. And here you have the credential for the Superbase. So here we can be able to select the data table. So we're gonna select the document table and we're gonna insert documents onto this table. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the embeddings. And then here we're just gonna use the OpenAI for the embeddings. And then we're just gonna set up the credentials. So simply we just put the API keys here. And then here the model we're gonna choose is the text embedding three small. And then here, instead of documents, we're just gonna creates the default data loader, which will load data from the previous step in the workflow, okay? And then here we also make sure we wanna change the text splitting. So here we're just gonna split every 1,000 characters with 200 characters overlap. We're just gonna click on custom. And here we can be able to choose our text splitter. So we're just gonna use the recursive character splitting to split text into chunks by characters recursively. Recommended for most cases. So we're just gonna use that and it's stick with the default settings here. All right, so once we added recursive character text splitting, then we also need to add data. So here you can see I have added a field to basically create a variable to add a data field, right? So this is gonna be the data we pass to the uh, Superbase where we're going to add the records onto the document table. So here you can see this is just a paragraph text, which is about section for a fake business. And here you can see this is the list of questions we're gonna ask. So here I'm just gonna execute the workflow and adding the data onto the Superbase. And if we were to run this, we should be getting an error because we don't have the metadata column inside of our documents table. So what we need to do is be able to add this document table for the metadata column so that we can be able to insert the documents onto the table. So what we need to do is if we were to navigate to Superbase, you can see that we have four columns, ID, content, full text search, and the embeddings. So we need to edit this table and be able to add additional column. So here I'm just gonna add additional column and this is gonna be the metadata. And the data types here is gonna be JSONB or JSON binary data here, okay? And then we're just gonna click on save. It's going to update the table. Now we're just gonna come back to NAN and execute the workflow again. All right, so now you can see the workflow execute successfully. If I were to navigate to Superbase and refresh, you can see that we have the content added onto the documents. And really quickly, if we were to look at the database for the document table, you can see that for the data that we have, we have the full text search, which looks something like this. And then we also have the embeddings. And here you can see these are the vector embeddings for the paragraph that we insert. 
Okay, all right, so once we insert the data onto the data table, now you can see I have deactivated this workflow and I'm just gonna click on save. And then here, what I did here is basically I also added AI agents that's going to retrieve the data using the hyper search function from the Superbase. And these are the list of questions we're gonna test. So you can see that we have the full text search questions and we also have the semantic search questions. And based on the data that we insert, which is a, just a paragraph, we should be able to get those expected answers, okay? So to basically do this, basically you can see I have created the chat model, the memory, and also the tools. And the tools here is gonna be exactly the same as what we have here. And the only difference here is that inside of the tool, we can see that we have led AI to define the body, JSON body request for the query value. Okay, so we're gonna let AI to define this and based on the you know chat input, right? So let's test this out, open the chats, and here we're gonna start with the first question, which is to test the full text search results, right? So here we're gonna ask to see what's the warranty for this particular products, and we're testing for the full text search, and the expected result is 10 years with the peace of mind warranty, okay? So let's ask this question and see what the AI responds. So here you can see right away, this is our uh, results. Right, so from our database, from knowledge base, which come with 10 years peace of mind warranty, which is exactly what we're looking for, for the expected answer. So let's test the next question, which is do you have a virtual room design service? So same thing, this is gonna be a full text search test. It's a yes or no question, but you can see right away it says yes, there is a virtual room design service, so which is the same as what we expected. All right, so now next up, we're gonna test up the semantic search tags. So here, we're just gonna copy the question, which is, I need a couch that handle my kids and dog. So it's literally just recommendations on the products that this business is selling, right? Or this business is offering. So we're just gonna copy the question, paste it, and let's see what the, um, the hyper reg respond. So here you can see, um, basically, we get the data for the Everest, uh, which is similar to what we're looking for, right? The Everest sectional sofa and pet friendly, stain resistant fabric and you can see this uh, mentioning here right long lasting quality okay so next up we're going to take a look at another question which is can someone help me make my house look nice okay so this one the key thing is we're looking for the virtual room design service that's being offered by this business and let's see if the semantic search function um, is able to retrieve that information so we're going to copy the question and we're just going to ask like what what services can you offer so let's try to hit this and let's see if it's able to generate the response. And now you can see that it's listed out all the things that the services they offer, right? So the virtual room design and the furniture design, which is included inside of documentation. So that's exactly similar to what we're looking for. And you might be wondering why I rephrased that question because sometimes the AI agents might just use the AI instead of the tool to answer that question. So I just wanna make it much more specific that, hey, we're targeting for this business and we're looking to target that specific business information that we're looking to achieve from the knowledge base or from the reg, right? But all in all, you can see that with those tests, we are able to see the hybrid search has the functionality for the full text search and the semantic search, okay? So it's able to find the exact information we're looking for, and it's also able to find recommendations or relevant information that's similar to what we're looking for.